Welcome to our seminar this week. Our topic of discussion this week is strings, as you know. Um, I want to thank you very much for allowing me to share my knowledge with you. I'm just, uh, I've been so, I look forward to seeing all of you every week. I look forward to seeing my students every time, every day. I mean, uh, some of you who attended my seminars earlier, uh, I met, I'm, uh, if you recall, my life really revolves around my vision, my students. Again, my vision is to produce world-class tennis players, so spending time with all of you means everything to me. So thank you very much. Um, have you all had a good week? Good? Yeah. You know, you're out of town, right? When did you get back? Tuesday. That's great. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Um, any questions that you have? At any time, you have any questions? You have any comments? You have any feedback? Anything? Please stop me. I want to see you interact with me. Okay? Um, as you know, our, as our topic of discussion is strings today, I'm going to hit about three, four sub points. Three main, three or four sub points. And if we have time, I'll add to that. Okay. Um, first point, there are different types of strings. So typically known is one is the hard type and the other type is the soft type. So I want to, before I go into that, I want to remind you of these key, these key points in mind. I'm going to come back to these points all the time. One is your skill set. So the sharper your skill set, the more skilled you are, you have very high levels of feel. That means your feel in terms of how you sense everything is extremely, extremely sharp. So your feel, so skill set related to your feel. The other factor is grip. And I'll elaborate what grip, grip is. And I've told you in every session, every, every one of our discussions, is everything is connected. So you have to keep that in mind, everything is connected. So going back to different types of strings, so one is the hard type and the other type is a soft type. So if you combine the two, it becomes a hybrid. So my recommendation to almost all my students would be a soft type. You know why? Because it's easier on the arm. It's, it's, when I say soft strings, coming back to this point, I'm looking, I, I, I'm sensing feel. A soft string will help you grip the ball better in my books. And that again is related to your skill set. And if you wanted to use a hard string, that would be a more rigid feel where I would look at a, from a grip standpoint, the feel on impact is going to be more rigid, which again, depending on your skill set, depending on your degree of feel, uh, I would not prefer that. Why? Because again, when I look at something that's rigid, it's going to leave your impact, meaning your hitting point, your, your contact, faster. And I don't like that. Again, that has a relationship with something else, which I'll go into. Okay, so keep that in mind. Point number two is tensions. So, grip, hard string, soft string, hybrid patterns have a relationship with tension. I'm sure you've heard of this, that hard tensions give you more power. Have you heard of that? Nathan, you have? Yep. Lower tensions give you more, sorry, higher tensions give you more control, I'm sorry. Lower tensions give you more power. But to me, in my books, 
it is the exact opposite. So in, in, when, when somebody is talking about higher attentions to do, will give me will give me more control. I disagree with that. Why? Because higher attention, again, keep going back to this term, grip. I will not be able to grip the ball on impact as much. And this again has a relationship with your skill set. Lower tensions, like I said, will give you more power. For me, lower tensions will give you more grip. It will help you compress, great term there, it's a, it's a key term. It will help you compress the ball longer through contact. And that means you will have higher levels of control. That means you will have higher degrees of command over your shot. Any questions so far? No? Okay. Third point. This is very, very important. Um, I mean, I, I get asked about this quite a bit. So again, my recommendation to my students, and like I said, it's a soft pattern. If you, want, if you wanted to use a hard string, I'll give you some examples of hard strings and soft strings. I would recommend them to use a hybrid. Okay. So a hybrid pattern is a hard string with a combination of a soft string. Okay. This is the string that I use. It is, uh, in my books, it is one of the best forms of strings that's, that's out there. It is a hybrid string, and what that is, is it's a combination of RPM blast, which is a hard string, 17 gauge, I'll tell you what that is, a VS gut, that is 16 gauge. You know what gauge is? Gauge PAM is the higher the number, the thinner the strings. The lower the number, the thicker the strings. Okay, so if it's a 15 gauge string, that means the string, uh, the thickness of the string is greater. If it's a 17, 18 gauge string, higher number, the, the string gauge is thinner. So, I know this, thicker strings will give you less grip. That means the feel is going to be less, but again, this has a relationship with your skill set. A thinner string will give you higher levels of grip, more feel. So as I use this string, the BS gut, gut is the purest form of string. It is the most, uh, that, that's a great example of a soft string. It gives you, it's, it's very uh, tremendous feel allows a person, depending on their skill set, to hold their ball on the strings longer. It's a purest form of string, that's why it's probably the most expensive string. It's a natural gut, it's a soft string. Wilson Sensation, Sensation is a soft string. Wilson NXT is a soft string. Um, the RPM Blast is a hard string. Lexalon, very, a lot of people use it. It's a very hard string. So again, to me, you know, I spoke about this uh, during our last month of uh, discussion, injuries. Again, uh, I believe hard strings add, it, 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 the effects of hard strings to the body is quite, quite extensive. Why? Because again, it's a very rigid field. It, okay, here's a good term. That's rigid, something that's rigid, feel is extremely unforgiving. So it's like playing with wire. So can you imagine again, depending on your technique too, as I said, everything is connected. Uh, it has an, uh, a tremendous effect on, on, on the body. So again, my recommendation to all of you and all my students, 
could always be a string gauge that is 16 or higher because you want, you want to use strings that is more forgiving, uh, better levels of feel, higher levels of grip related to your skill set. Okay, so staying with the gates, staying with the uh, the hybrid. One of the one of the questions I get asked by my students is, okay, Tito, should we string the hard string? So vertically, that means the main pattern, the soft strings in the crosses. That means horizontal. So mains, crosses. Or should we have the soft strings in the mains and the hard strings in the crosses? You have to know all this because since you play tennis, it's everything is basically aiding your skill set. Your equipment is a science. Um, my preference, my recommendation will always be that you want to use the soft strings in the mains, the hard strings in the crosses. But it's really up to the individual. Some of my students prefer the hard strings in the mains, the soft in the crosses. The general um, recommendation, almost everybody will tell you to have the hard strings in the mains, soft in the crosses. This is the most general common feedback. But for me, it's the exact opposite. I have the gut in the mains, which is a soft string, and the heart, the RPM blast in the crosses. Okay. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? No. Okay. Um, tensions. Very, very important. Kathy, what tension do you use? I, I don't even know. Okay, you need to know. All right. Everybody <laughs> needs to know their tension. Everybody needs to know what strings you use. Pam, Nathan, what, 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 what is your tension? 56. 56. Jim, what is your tension? 65. 65. Wow. Kathy, what is your uh, so, uh, Karen, what's your tension? I'm sorry. 50. 50. Very good. Uh, Linda, what is your tension? I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so again, do it like you've done it. <laughs> this is where again you have you have to know this because again, you play tennis. This is part of your skill set. Okay, this is also big term here, part of prevention injuries. You have to know everything. I, I don't know how many times I told uh, who attended my uh, our first month of. Seminars, injuries, uh, also in terms of, um, awareness. You have to be aware of everything. You have to be so mindful. You have to be conscious. You have to pay attention to everything. So in other words, you have to take ownership because this is yours. It is your. It's again. It's aiding your skill set. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What do you think my tension is? <laughs> 50. Kathy says 50. Jim? 50. 50. Karen? 44. 44. <laughs> Jason, what do you say? I say passed around and let them see. Pam, what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> I say 48. 48. Linda? No idea. No idea. Nathan? 51. I already know. Fifty-one. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your racket. See if they can feel. Would 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 you want to feel my racket? This is my racket. You want? Did you think you want to try? Here, here's my racket. I'll give you a thirty seconds to tell me. You can you can help him out. Okay. Kathy, yeah, Kathy, go ahead. I mean, you, you can tap on the strings. Kathy, go and tap on the strings. There you go. Look at the printed range on the frame. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my answer. I'm gonna say like, I'm gonna say like a 42, 44. 42, 44. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. Well, the easiest ways to know what tension high or low is here. Very easy. Okay. 
but it's a checkpoint. This is how you check it. But another easy way to know is you take the two middle strings, and there you go. Very simple, very easy. One, other one, two. I cannot share my tension with you, it's confidential. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, who was it? Who said? Did somebody say 42? Who said 42? Who's, Karen, Karen said 44. Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I'll, I, I, I'll, just, I'll just leave it at 44. Okay. That's that. Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nadidi, do you want to say something? No. Okay. Okay. That, this is, that's great. That's great. Um, the tensions. It's very, very important. Along with the strings. You know your tensions. You want to, again, this is your, I'm just recommending what you should be doing. But then again, it all depends on your skill set. It has everything is related to your skill set. And then everything else. Such as, of course, your skill set dictates feel, the sharpness of your feel. Your skill set dictates the sharpness of your grip, how long you can hold the ball on your strings, and so on and so on. Any questions? <laughs> so, uh, let's say I string one of my rackets, I change from 65 <laughs> down to, say, 50. Yep. How long is that going to take me to adjust? And what's the adjustment going to be? Am I going to have to hit the ball? Am I going to initially start hitting the ball soft into the net? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. But again, I just, want to, I just want to go over this. 15 pounds, dropping 15 pounds or going 15 pounds high up is a huge difference. Huge. So I want to tell you something. I dropped my tension about 2 pounds. And one of my students asked, actually Jay asked me, can you feel the difference? Absolutely. I'm very sensitive to everything I do. Everything. Because of my skill set. I'm not saying this to make myself look good. I can identify the smallest change in what I do. Everything. So, to answer Jim's question, I would not recommend Jim to immediately drop 15 pounds. I would have him gradually adjust the tension to 50 pounds and see where he ends up. And this is where the term experimentation, trial and error. So again, this is yours. I'm just providing recommendations. Okay, um, I have a question for all of you. Do you, actually, have you seen me keeping my rackets in a plastic bag? Do you see Linda has? Maybe Nathan, you have? Uh, Jim, have you? Yep, Jim, have you? Maybe you have. You see all the pros keep the racks in a plastic bag. Do you know why that is? Is it for fashion? There's a reason behind it. They keep the springs from like not loosening. Moisture. Moisture affects texture of the strings, which affects do not ever forget this term. It's a science. There's a reason why, as a professional, we do the things we do. There's a science, there's a reason, there are purposes behind it. So to avoid moisture from getting to the strings, which affects tensions, which affects texture of the strings, I use natural gut, VS gut is natural gut. Natural gut is even more sensitive to moisture. So that's the reason why we keep rackets in a plastic bag. Okay. Another, another question for you. Do the environment dictate tensions up and down? Yes it does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Temperatures. Absolutely. So, as you know, summer is right around the corner. Temperatures, temperatures are higher. 
before I tell you anything else, do I change my temperatures in the summer? Uh, sorry, do I change my tensions in the summer? summer? I don't. Because again, I can, my skill set is, I suppose, decent enough where I can control it, regardless of the circumstances. And again, on the other side to that is, I expect that from myself. I demand that I control what I do under any circumstances. That's the level, level of command I expect from myself. Okay, but again, for a typical club tennis player, let's say if you're at 50 pounds, for example, in the summer when the temperatures get higher, maybe you can go, you can maybe increase the your tensions. In the winter, where there is a lot, the key term here, there are higher compressions due to cold temperatures. Strings are naturally getting, I suppose, feel so rigid due to temperatures. Maybe you can drop your tensions. So again, the key term there is your skill set, your degree of feel, control, command, grip, experimentation, trial and error. Okay, any questions? Got one. Yep. So, you know, you're talking about the soft hard string. Yep. Uh, so the, the gut is a soft string. Yes. And then you do a hybrid, right? Yes. So you have a soft and a hard one in yes. there? Yes. So if you had just gut throughout, would that give you more grip or do you lose some of it by not getting that combination? I believe I that's a great question. Since natural gut is very, uh, it's, it's, a bit, I want to be a bit cautious using this term. I use it, I suppose, at times, it's lightly. It's, I mean, even though I said um, natural gut is forgiving, if I use a full set of gut, I believe it, it's going to be, uh, I will lose some sense of grip. To neutralize that liveliness to a certain extent, I will use a combination of a hard string to take away, to neutralize so-called that uh, pure sense of feel. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Anything else? Okay, I have another question for you. Did you have a question? Okay. Um, yes. Should you string your rackets with the same tensions? If you have two rackets, should it be the same tension? Should be the, should there be a variable? Same. 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 Jason same. Sarah same. 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 Why same? And why not different? I have to think when they break. That way, when you pull the next one out, you're ready to go. It's that the is, same feel. That is correct. Again, feel same sense of feel. You, your equipment has to be absolutely identical to your sense of feel. Okay? I don't know how many of you know this. This is my last point. Um, can you use, a question, can you use two different sets of tensions? For example, Let's say for the mains, I use 55 pounds. For the crosses, I use 50 pounds. Is that, should, is that, is that, can you, is that, <coughs> should you do that? Is that not allowed? Is it bad for a racket? What do you think? You need to know this. Any, Nathan, Kathy, Karen, <laughs> Linda, Jim, Pam? Same. 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 Kathy says same. Okay. Pam, what do you think? Same. Jim? Well, I think you could string them different. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> right. So again, I use two different sets of tensions. My main set, my, my vertical strings, the mains, is lower than the crosses. Some of my students have it the other way. Some of my students have it the same all the way through. So as I'm telling you this, this always goes back to your skill set. 
as you can see, your skill set. The more skilled you are, that means your sense of feel is so sharp that you, you are you, like, like a science. You're using your equipment, equipment to where it provides the greatest, the utmost level of grip, control, command for every shot. Every shot that you hit. Then again, it is your skill set though. You're just aiding your skill set. You're just helping your skill set out. Questions? Yes. I got one other. So if you don't break your strings, when should you naturally cut them out and get a new set? That, that's a great question. Yeah. That, that, that is a great question. Oh. So what is your name? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. That's a great question. I, I get asked that question quite a bit. Well, it all depends. It depends on how often you play. It depends on, of course, your skill set. It depends on the environment. So, for me, if I had to recommend someone, again, also, also depends on the string type that you use. If I had to recommend somebody to change strings, maybe six to eight weeks, maybe you can restring your rackets, six to eight weeks. But then again, it's a variable. Why? Because there are several factors that come, you have to consider. And this is where, you know, as you've attended my seminars, I will always remind you of hopefully what, through me, you have gotten to be extremely aware of yourself. You're very conscious, you are extremely mindful. And one of my biggest terms right here, in tune. You are in tune with your science of developing to be hopefully a skilled tennis player. Just like again, a doctor studies to be a physician and highly skilled physician. The same concept applies here. It's a great question, Jay. Anything else? Okay. Well, I have one. So usually when you know you just give it to somebody to string and generally they'll say much higher than what you're recommending. Absolutely. Absolutely. So why is that? Uh. <laughs> well, I mean this is in contradiction to what I've normally Absolutely. been recommended. Absolutely. That's why I I I think I'm pretty sure I've told you. Almost everything you hear from me is going to be very, it's unlike everything else you've probably heard. Right. I mean, I, I have no idea. Absolutely. Yeah, but I would assume my record is probably strong at about okay. 58. I, is my guess, since, but, right, since, that's yeah. about what yeah. you know, I, mean, I think. Yeah. To me, one, I suppose, I, I, you know, since I'm getting recorded here, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe I can be blunt, I'll tell you. I'll, actually, I'll, I'll tell you. One is lack of knowledge. Very few people know. Again, why? Because very few people are highly skilled. Number two, top tennis players. Top tennis players, again, depending on what level you're at, as you're working to be higher skilled, you do not have as much control. So the general knowledge that's out there is higher tensions will provide higher levels of control. Uh, I believe it's, but again, no. but I, I see why they would somebody would say that, because again, even though I'm telling you that, mine is the opposite. That's why at the very beginning I told you, everything is connected. There's a relationship to your skill set, how how skilled you are, and just want to remind you, uh, I, I'm not going to touch on it at all. Your skill set is determined by your strokes, your technique. So that's a great question. So I don't usually say the manufacturer recommends. Yeah. Right. What's on the racket? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Again, almost all the rackets, almost all the rackets. Do you, do you, do you recall last week I, I talked about Claire's rackets? Claire's rackets are only for one or two percent of the population. Ninety-five, ninety-eight percent is basically for everybody else. 
So they are, the, the target audience is 98%, 95% in that range. So, um, you know, for example, Linda, for Darren, uh, as I work with him, of course, even though I, I, I can't recall his exact tension, I will never tell him to string his rackets over 50 pounds. There's no way. There's no way. We like that? Of course not. But, but I expect that his skill set allows him to, for greater grip, better sense of feel. And his, I consider his skill set to be quite sharp. So I expect him to be able to control it. Someone like Jason. I will never recommend a tension about 50 pounds. There is no way. Is it their choice? Absolutely. What do you recommend for Jason? <laughs> like 49. Yeah. Again, again, he, again, if I, if I, for me, their boundaries would be 50 pounds. That is it. 50 pounds is the highest that he can go up to. That's a great question. Did that answer your question? Did that answer your question, Linda? Did that answer your question? Yeah, so again, that, that's a great point. Almost every one of you will be told, I'm, Karen, I'm sure you were surprised that, no, my goodness. I, you want me, I want to string a racket at 50 pounds? Yeah. Why? Because again, I wish I could share my tension with you, but I won't. I will not. Well, again, I just, uh, I mean, 50, 58 pounds. Well, what's the lowest you can go? Under 40? Of the ball goes through the frame. Of course. You can go under 40. Why not, Pam? And that's why, that's why, again, what's a repeated term here? Skill set. What is your skill set? So how can we try out a racket with a load? Yeah. And this is where, Jim, you know, you'll have to demo it. Cut the strings out, have it low, have it lower, and this is where again, I, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure I mentioned to you last week, tennis is the second most expensive sport in the world. It's a science; it takes time. Trial and error, experimentation, it takes time. Uh, uh, somebody asked me a question last week. Uh, how do we select a racket? It takes time. I am still searching for a racket. I am in the process of switching rackets. I'm literally getting desperate. I cannot find a racket that meets my requirements. And I'm very picky. I'm very stubborn. I, I exactly know what I demand from my equipment. Can you get like a custom I could. I could. Absolutely. Anything else? This is wonderful. This is great. Anything else? Nathan, any questions? Um, so, uh, one more. Speak up. Please. What would you recommend for me as a level five player string on? Tell us. I've listened to It's a great string. It's a soft string. It's wonderful. Uh, Nathan, you know, before if I, if I had to recommend something for you, if I, before I do that, I would have to look at your skill set. So based on your based on the sharpness of your skill set, your toolkit, I would recommend attention. How long does it take for you to figure out somebody's skill set? And like, so like 30 minutes or like a couple hours or weeks? Within minutes. <laughs> As soon as you like step out onto the <laughs> you don't even have to it's swing your racket. Yeah, right. yeah, yes. Again, I, I don't mean to come across the wrong way. Again, uh, I, mean, I, I hope that five shots through, through, through these discussions, I hope you're getting to know me. I mean, I do constant research, constant. You know, I I tell Jason all the time that he is one of the most. Uh, extraordinary assets I've ever worked with. Logistics, God gifted, uh, DNA, uh, genes. You know, I look at people's physique. I look at the way they walk, the way they run, the way they hold the racket immediately, the way they take the racket out of their bag. Immediately tells me so much about an individual. Why? Because I study it. I, this tennis is my life. 
this is my field of expertise. Just again, this is where I, you know, people, when people come to me and say, do you know what, I want to become a world-class tennis player? The number one question, I don't mean to go off, go off subject, I ask myself is, do you even know what that means? Most people don't. I mean, it is that tough. Being a doctor is tough, right? Being a skilled tennis player, you have to study. And Kathy, that's a great question. I mean, that is a great question. And one of the, another characteristic I look at, I don't mean to go off subject, just to say with Kathy, is people's interaction with me. I mean, they, I'm working with human behavior. Human behavior tells me so much about a person's so-called makeup, their toolkit, their uh, intent, their desires. Did I answer your question? Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> One quick thing to kind of piggyback on that. So, to answer that question for you from someone who's worked with you too, it'll probably take like 10 seconds. And, and here, here's a quick little story. So we're out playing, you know, and he's like, he, he's like, hey, hey, you need to change your grip, you need to move it down more, because I'm holding it up too high, right? So I'm like, go again. So I move it down, and naturally, you know, I start getting a blister uh, there, because I'm holding it different. I'm like, oh, this kind of hurts. So I'm like, I'm just going to move it up like that much. And I mean, we're clear across the court, right? I move it up that much. I get ready to feed the ball, and he's like, Jay, why'd you move your grip up? I almost fell over. Like, I'm like, how did you see that? That is impossible. That that was impossible. I mean, literally that much. I'm like, I didn't know what to say. So anyway, it's literally, within a few minutes, he'll, hello. <laughs> he was like, yes. No, it's, it's not, again, again, like I told you, uh, <laughs> you mean everything to me. I, I mean, you mean your well-being, your development, your growth, your sharpness means everything to me. So I do anything and everything I can to aid that, to help you. So I, I'm, I don't know, Karen, you were here uh, the month of, uh, Jimmy, you've been there almost every, every week, month of injuries. I just made a comment earlier that I hope through me you have become, you're becoming more aware of yourself. I can identify with every movement of my body at all times. All times. Just like that. I Meaning the way I work is, I'll take a snapshot, I'll take a snapshot of you if something has gone wrong. And I'm constantly taking snapshots. I'm, over, I'm just overviewing everything all the time. I'm overseeing everything all the time. How do I get there? I train. You know, one of the questions I get asked quite a bit is to do, you know what, you seem you're always, you seem like you're sharp. I mean, you seem like you're always sharp. Yeah. I expect myself to be always sharp. Always. No ifs, no buts, no shortcuts, no substitutes. I'm always sharp. I expect that from myself. I demand that from myself. Some days I'm even sharper. So, you know, I tell Jay, I told him, like, maybe a couple of days ago. Do not ever try to bluff in front of me. Ever. <laughs> ever. I might not figure it out, but I'll figure it out eventually. Oh, I do. tell my students <laughs> all the time, do not ever try to bluff in front of me. If you try to cover up, I'll find out. Anything else? I love it. I love it. <laughs> Anything else? Anything? Linda? Anything? Good? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I loved it.